By the end of the 19th century, the fact is that India was already Britain's biggest cash cow, the world's biggest purchaser of British goods and exports, and the source of highly paid employment for British civil servants. We literally paid for our own oppression. 1947, India achieved freedom. 2003, the Indian government announced the Chandrayaan mission. 2008, India makes a breakthrough and launches Chandrayaan-1, the first Indian lunar probe. 2019, the second lunar exploration mission and a more complex mission, Chandrayaan-2, was launched. 2023, India's third lunar exploration, Chandrayaan-3, made history. And then, British media cried foul. I would also like to now invite India to return the £2.3 billion foreign aid money that we sent them between 2016 and 2021. We're also set to give them £57 million next year, but I think the British taxpayer should keep hold of that. The person you just heard was Patrick Christie's. He is a British news presenter who said that any country that can afford to go to the moon does not need foreign aid. But Indians today have broken the shackles of colonialism and that reflected in the response of Indian social media users. Users of X, formerly known as Twitter, responded to the demand and asked UK to return the Kohinoor along with the $45 trillion that Britain is estimated to have taken out of India during the colonial rule. What happened next, Britain perhaps had not expected. Riding a billion cheers and cruising through a tricky descent of about 19 minutes, the lander module of Chandrayaan-3 kept its date with the moon on 23rd August 2023. Sir, we have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. The 6.03 pm touchdown made India the first country to reach the largely unexplored South Polar region of the Moon, setting up a series of experiments spanning 14 Earth days through payloads on the lander, rover and propulsion module. Chanda Mama is very far away. Now, one day he will come. When the children do it, Chanda Mama is just ISRO Chief S. Somanath said Chandrayaan 3 assumes significance because it will inspire India to configure missions to Mars, Venus, and beyond. The success of the mission with the Made in India craft will inspire future scientific exploratory missions, marking the beginning of a golden era. However, it seems like India's golden era has already ruffled some feathers. British media went on a ranting spree with shocking comments about India's moon mission exhibiting its inherent racist agenda. News presenter Patrick Christie's urged many with his comments during his news bulletin about India's successful lunar mission. Patrick started his bulletin congratulating India for its historic feat but that quickly changed into what internet users termed as a jealous, racist rant. Patrick Christie's demanded back the £2.3 billion that he alleged were given to India as aid money by the United Kingdom. I would also like to now invite India to return the £2.3 billion foreign aid money that we sent them between 2016 and 2021. We're also set to give them £57 million next year, but I think the British taxpayer should keep hold of that, don't you? We should not be giving money to countries with a space programme. As a rule, if you can afford to fire a rocket at the dark side of the moon, you shouldn't be coming to us with your handout. India reportedly has 229 million people living in poverty. According to the UN, it's the highest number anywhere in the world. It's also the fifth largest economy in the world with an annual GDP of around $3.75 trillion. Why are we paying to help poverty-stricken Indians when their own government won't bother? Needless to mention, 
X users were absolutely furious after watching this video and highlighted the $45 trillion stolen from India by the UK. $45 trillion started trending on X after these reactions went afloat post Chandrayaan 3's landing. The post soon started gaining traction and users from India were quick to point out that the UK should also return the money looted from India. They claimed the amount was $45 trillion. The buzz soon caused $45 trillion to trend on X. The figure first came to limelight after research done by economist Utsa Patnayak and published by Columbia University Press claimed that Britain drained a total of nearly $45 trillion from India during the period 1765 to 1938. It is a staggering sum and for perspective, the amount is 15 times more than the GDP of the UK today. Petnai calculated the sum after analysing nearly two centuries of detailed data on tax and trade. Many of you would have heard uh, in another country the term century of humiliation. India actually had two centuries of humiliation by the West because the West kind of you know, in its predatory form came into India uh, in the mid 18th century and continued or almost exactly for, two, well, for 190 years after that. And uh, it was interesting, uh, uh, I think a year ago, uh, there was actually a, a very serious economic study uh, which tried to estimate how much the British took out of India in value terms. And a very calculated math ended up put a number of $45 trillion at today's value. According to a news report published in The Guardian in March 2023, the UK's aid to India was meant to have stopped in 2015 after India said it did not want it. But a review by the Independent Commission for Aid Impacts said that around £2.3 billion, which is almost Rs 23,000 crore, in UK aid went to India between 2016 and 2021. Western opinion shapers often have a mistaken sense of world history since they tend to look at it from the prism of a colonizer. They function under the belief that the colonial and imperialist rule greatly benefited the colonized subjects and offered them the fruits of industrial revolution and bringing them to civilization. But history is witness. That has never been true for anybody. And definitely not for India. Colonialists like Robert Clive bought their rotten boroughs in England on the proceeds of their loot in India while taking the Hindi word loot into their dictionaries as well as their habits. I stand to offer you the Indian example, Sir Richard. India's share of the world economy when Britain arrived on its shores was 23%. By the time the British left, it was down to below 4%. Why? Simply because India had been governed for the benefit of Britain. By the end of the 19th century, the fact is that India was already Britain's biggest cash cow, the world's biggest purchaser of British goods and exports, and the source of highly paid employment for British civil servants. We literally paid for our own oppression.